So welcome back. We're going to make an app which um, just simply takes users from a tiny web database and passwords and basically checks that the username and password match up, that the user um, user's password matches the one that's stored in TinyWebDB. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually get put some data in TinyWebDB for us to work with and this is a good idea if you haven't got any data to start with so I'm just going to copy this service URL here and I'm going to paste it into a new tab here I'm going to go ahead and create my users and passwords straight away on the App Inventor default web database so I'm going to use store value here and the tag that I'm going to use in App Inventor when I get coding will be, I'll just call it names, I could have called it users but I might all use names for now. And because I'm going to store each one as a separate item, I'm going to use this format here, which you can see is to separate each one with a comma, so they become separate element items. So user one in double quotes, user two in double quotes, user three in double quotes, and surround the whole thing in square brackets. Store that value you can see that that's now stored under the tag names and there they are the three users. Now the way I'm going to work this is I'm going to also store passwords for each one of those in the same order. So my passwords tag is going to contain, um, and I'll just do this for you here, you can see square brackets and I've just put P1, P2, P3 here to match that, so that's going to match user 1, user 2, user 3, so the index position P1 will max, match the index position for user 1, which is position 1, and so on for 2 and 3, so I'll store those values, and just double check that they're there by using the get value. The trouble with this database of course is everybody's using it, so I mean if there's a good chance at some point, well they, there's a very good chance these will be overwritten. Anyway, there they are, there's three you, names and let's just check the passwords uh, that's the lowercase one I want to get value and there they are three passwords okay good so now we need to go into app inventor itself and get coding okay so there's my screen I've set up a spinner that I'm going to use to hold the the names uh, you don't have to use a spinner the other one you could use is list picker um, I like spinner it uses less space Okay, uh, I've also got a password authentication field. This is the password text box you can see down here. And I've stretched a, a big button across there called log on, button log on, or log in actually. Um, okay, so we need to, uh, oh yeah, TinyWebDB, of course, that's in there as well. And I'm using a notifier to tell us whether or not the uh, user password matches the username. Okay, so the next step is to go into the blocks editor and start coding. Okay, so as you can see here, what I've got is the screen initialize event. Um, what do I want to do when this uh, screen starts up? Well, I want to do two things. I want to get that names list from the tiny web DB, but I also want to get the passwords as well. So I need to uh, grab those two with a call button going to store the passwords in an in a list. So the reason I'm doing that is um, so that I can match their index positions because in a list you have these things called items and those items will match the number of as you can see here the number of passwords that I'm going to actually be collecting back but I don't know how many that is so I'm just going to store it as an empty list for now. And Names, well, the names when it's returned from the TinyWebDB, I'm just going to store that straight into the elements of my spinner here called spinner names. So I'm just going to set the spinner elements to whatever comes back from the uh, TinyWebDB. So the next thing we need to do is to uh, get the TinyWebDB got value from the TinyWebDB service. Now, it could be one of two values we get back. It could be names, it could be passwords. So we need to check which one's which. And the only way of doing that, of course, is with an if block. Basically, if the tag returned is names, then I'm gonna set the spinner elements to the names 
and if it's not then um, I'm going to load that list up here with, with the values. So I am going to add an if else if as well just to check the second tag. Right so let's do that then. Let's check the first tag. Let's see what comes back. Um, if the tag from the web db which I just hover over that to grab that is get just get rid of that get tag from web db and that is equal to uh, to names let's see if that one comes back then all I'm going to do is uh, oh I'm going to get the spinner names elements and set that to what must be a list because that's what's on the database so get value from web db Okay, so in, in goes that. Um, the other that thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to just duplicate that and check to see if the value that comes back is passwords. And if it is, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to set passwords to the value there. So variables set global passwords to, and in this case, get the value, sorry that's tag, I just want to get the value, get the value from the web DB. The other thing I'm going to do here, let's move that down there, is use the notify just so that we can tell whether or not this has worked. So if the spinner elements are set, um, then let's just broadcast a message and just say names uh, retrieved, which they will be, because they'll be in the drop-down list for the spinner. Okay, and similarly for the password, we'll do the same thing there and say passwords retrieved. Oops. Okay, so um, we'll give that a go and uh, let's see what happens. Okay, so um, we need to get the emulator started. So uh, we'll go to connect emulator and wait a few minutes. I'll pause the video so we don't have to. Okay, so we'll just um, see here it comes now. So we should see the uh, spinner list being populated and there we are, passwords have been retrieved and the names have been retrieved. So, excellent, all is working as it should be. So let, we should see here, uh, our users, there they are, all those three users, and our passwords, which at the moment are just hanging around in our uh, password list. Okay, so the next thing I'm supposed to do is to check if user one has entered, because he's the first index position, um, his password which will be p1 which will be the first position of our password list then we can click log on the log on event will occur and we can say whether or not that password matches that user we're just going to use the uh, index position it's just like an array if you know what an array is basically it's just a list of items that are going to match each other's position so let's go on and do that Okay, so what I'm going to do to tidy this up is just uh, collapse uh, these two blocks now because we've got everything we need from the database. So what we need to do now is just to see what the user has um, selected from the username. So we need the spinner names after selecting and we want to just check to see um, what they've selected. And what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to create a variable to store the position of the thing they've selected in that list. So um, I'll call it index, so we can find that index position. And I'm going to set it to zero to start with. That's going to be our default position. So if they don't select anything, um, then that will remain at zero. We know we can't go on and uh, check the passwords. So now we can set the variable global index, there, is, there it is, index to whatever they've happened to have selected. So what we'll do is for that, get the spinner 
and find the selection index which is there okay we can pop that in there there we go okay so we've got um, a number indicating the position of the thing they've selected we're not interested in the name uh, we're just interested in where it is in that list so um, this is where this particular tutorial comes to uh, its first conclusion um, we've run out of time basically we're over our 10 minute slot so um, I'll come back uh, in a second uh, to give you part two so stay tuned and you'll see part two on the website or YouTube wherever you're looking at this from bye